Hey guys, I wanted to make a short video today about how you can repair your Battleborn batteries if the BMS blows up. So, I had these four Battleborns in my golf cart, and my golf cart's 48 volts, so I had four of them in series, so that would give me basically 51 volts at 100 amps. Well, that might be fine for a stock golf cart, but my golf cart had a controller in it that you can basically dial up the amps to, to what you need to make it run faster. So what would happen is uh, when I would floor the golf cart, it would run probably for maybe 20, 30 seconds, and then it would, I could feel the BMS, one of the BMSs on the batteries would cut out, and then I would lose power. But then the BMS would reset, and then I could go again. And as long as I didn't floor the golf cart, it was fine. So, basically, if you have a golf cart, you're better off buying a 51 volt battery, um, preferably with the 200 amp BMS. That way you'd have no issues. The other issue you, you, you could have as well is because if you have four individual batteries and they're not at this topped off at the same charge, so in other words, if you don't charge them all to full, then put them in, they could, over time, the voltage could drift apart and then you could have one battery that goes to full voltage and then maybe one that goes to maybe like 95%. And then over time, that just gets worse and worse and then you have less capacity because of that. So if you're gonna do a golf cart replacement, I, in my opinion, I would just buy one battery that had a uh, 200 amp BMS. That way you would probably never have any issues with um, the golf cart cutting out, the motor cutting out on you. But anyway, so here we are. Um, one of the BMSs failed on these Battleborns. Now, um, Battleborn, I did call Battleborn. Um, they, they weren't gonna replace it. Um, so what I decided to do was check the cells myself, make sure the cells were good and see if it was in fact the BMS. So there was a couple of videos out there on YouTube on how to get this cover off. It, it's a bit of a pain. Yeah. What I end up using was this multi-tool. So it's an oscillating, oscillating multi-tool. And I cut around the edges and then I cut here because I wanted to keep the terminals. They want to remove everything. It would have been harder to, to remove the top, I think, if I would have tried to leave this part here. What I would have probably done different is I probably would not have cut right here and I would not have cut right here. This would have probably would have made this a little more stable and I'll show you what I mean in a minute you can maybe see how this one this one moves a little bit probably would have been a little more stable if I just left that there but anyway you have to be really careful um, probably and I'll take the cover off probably about a quarter inch is the most you want to go in at all sides you don't want to go too far because there are wires behind there that you can cut into so um, I tried looking at the BMS to see if I can get a replacement, and I had no luck finding the, re the exact replacement. So what I did was I ended up buying a, um, a JK BMS, a 100 amp JK BMS. I was gonna go with the 200 amp, but I didn't know if it would fit the, si the physical size. It might've been too big, so I went with the 100 amp BMS. Uh, you know, the it's a 100 amp hour battery anyway, so you know, I figured it was appropriately sized but I was mostly worried about would it fit inside uh, the process wasn't that hard I just wanted to highlight a couple a couple things that I did just so you know so what was on the existing BMS was only four wires so it went to battery main which would have been the technically the fourth uh, set of batteries then the third set then the second set, then the first set. So in other words, if I check the voltage from ground to the first balance lead, I got like around 3.2 volts. If I check the second one, it doubled that to six volts, give or you know, nominal. 
And then when I checked the third lead, it would go to nine volts. And then obviously when I went to the fourth balance lead, it, it showed the full 12 volts um, of the battery. And all this, all four packs, I guess we can just call them packs, but I'll call them groups of batteries. They were 100% uh, in voltage with each other. So they all measured about 3.2 volts. So the issue, the two big issues I had was, is there was only four balance leads. And you know, most BMSs, if you go with a 4S, you're gonna have um, the four leads plus a ground. So there was no ground. Uh, I'm assuming that the way the other BMS is, is it just used um, the negative terminal for uh, the ground. So what I had to do was I, and, and just so you know, there's five of these, I think they're 10 gauge wires. There's five uh, black and five blue. So I cut them off the uh, existing BMS. And then what I did was um, on one, I was just trying to do some testing to see which way I like better. But I think that's a, um, a one aught terminal. So I stripped all five wires, ran it in there, and I used a hydraulic crimp on it, and it came out really nice. So there's five wires running into that. And I just happened not to have another one of these, so I had two smaller ones. So I decided then to take three of the wires, run it into one of these, hydraulic crimp it, and then take two of the wires and run it into the other, and hydraulic crimp it. Um, I had to build a little bit uh, of, a, of a, I bought an L bracket, because I needed to extend this because there was no way this was gonna connect in there. So I got an L bracket, bent it, so that I could kind of um, move it away from the BMS a little bit. And it's very close to the edge, so I did put a couple layers of electrical tape, and I, I probably should make this a little bit better so there's absolutely no chance of touching the, the BMS uh, case. And on the other side, I did the same thing. I put, um, I think, some heat shield, heat shrink, and then tape as well, so it couldn't hit the, the case. So um, what I end up doing on the JK BMS, and I don't know if you can see the model or part number in there, but basically this was a 100 amp 4S to 8S BMS from JK. I like the JKs, I, I use them in other battery um, management systems that I have as well. And so basically, um, you know, what I did was I run the, the black wire from the balance wires. I ran that to my, you can kind of see it, kind of see it right in there, but basically it goes to the um, negative on the battery. We'll eventually connect to the negative on the battery. And then I used the four existing wires and I just soldered them in. I used a one, two, three. And on the fourth one with the JKs, in order for it to only sense a 4S, I didn't use the wires in between. I had to use the last available red wire, and then I connected that to the fourth red wire, basically telling it's the end of the pack. Um, I soldered those two together, heat shrinked them, and the, the furthest one away goes to the terminal on the battery. So uh, that is how I was able to replace the BMS with a, a you know, third party BMS. Now I'm not condoning you do this, you know, um, not, you know, you do it this at your own risk, but I was able to successfully replace it, uh, ran a full charge, charge it up afterwards, and then discharged it. And I got a, you know, 100 and, I think it was 102 amp hours out of it afterwards. And it works. Uh, so I haven't, um, fully figured out how I'm going to do this uh, cap. I might use caulking. I might use epoxy. The The argument for using caulking on this would be A, I can get it watertight, and B, if I need to take this off again, if I need to get that off again, uh, it'll come off a heck of a lot easier with caulking as if I use the uh, two-part epoxy on there. So, um, If you have one of these, and I'll just show you the JKBMS that you can see. You can see the um, cell balance wires down there. There's four of them. You can see the voltage. 
Um, you can see the cell difference. You can see how close they are right now. Uh, this BMS does have one amp balancing on it, which is kind of cool. So it will continue to balance the cells. And uh, it has all the features that a regular BMS would have. I think it has low voltage shutoff, high voltage disconnect, short circuit disconnect. And um, I was able to revive this battery. I wasn't gonna throw it away. I knew the cells were good. I just had a feeling that the BMS was um, shot and you know, I wanted to still use this battery. I can use it for other purposes um, rather than just throw it away.